Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Tap in, tap in. What's going on, David? I don't know if the heart is. We lie. What's going on, Argot 936? David Bruce, what's going on? What's up, Rhonda? <coughs> Glad to see you made it. <laughs> My man, Mazanga. Where's Waldo? So we getting ready to speak about the um, the city ordinance. So I got the link inside um, the description. So the meeting is going to be starting in about 10 minutes. So if if you want to tap into the, the live stream of the of the city hall or the city council meeting, um, the link is in the description. I will be staying live throughout the process, but probably best that you tap into the link and go into the the live stream so that so that you can chat chat into the live stream and um redress your grievances um show your support and um give your thoughts about the the ordinance that they charging me with you know i got big b nation with me as always Big bees in the bow tie. Yeah, they make sure y'all tap into that live link, the, the live stream link that I have in the description, please. And get ready to, to start flooding and chat. What's going on, Jessica? Nice to see people out holding accountable. Yeah, absolutely. We wouldn't have it no other way. I haven't heard, I haven't seen that from VI. I contacted him earlier, but um, I haven't heard from him. He hadn't responded to me, so I know if he's coming or not. I don't know if he got sick. I know a lot of people have been getting sick lately, so hopefully he's all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm here. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, so yeah, we just getting, getting revved up. Everybody's coming in now. That's the mayor up right there. That's the mayor just came in. And those are some of the councilmen and women that are already up there. So, go ahead and bow tie that like button. Definitely appreciate you. So I got my little speech ready. It's about three minutes long, so it ain't gonna take. I don't. I'm probably won't need an extra minute, but if I do, I can request the extra minute, so they say. And um, yeah, yeah, it don't start to 1700, so that's probably in about another five or ten minutes, I guess. What time is it? Yeah, about another five or ten minutes. Yeah, y'all share that link with all y'all 
platforms as well so they can tune in and and show some love redress your grievances through the through the chat and the link through the live stream link um, so we are the first item on the agenda let me grab a Let me grab a, a, a agenda item. Good, good. Uh, Hello. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. 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 Hey, what's going on? Oh, hey. She did. <laughs> oh, okay, good nice to see you. Nice to see you. Where'd you sneak in? Uh, <laughs> you ain't seen Big Bow Tie coming up here? <laughs> Easily distracted. Oh, uh, yeah, y'all already signed up to, uh, yeah, yeah. so you're going, you live too, huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course, you know what time it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, are you, are you live? You guys got me uh, What's your channel again? Uh, no, uh, no, no question so, about it. Hey, uh, you guys, make sure you go follow No Questions About It. It's AB Audit, yeah, no questions about it. And what's your channel? AB Audit, uh, CJ Grisham, CJ Grisham, yeah, okay, it, keep it boring. See my man, CJ Grisham. We're gonna we're, we're we're gonna protect this man here today. <laughs> Y'all go follow him. We got this is him right here. No questions about it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna be back here. <laughs> yeah, so got the team with me. They ready to rock and roll like Bon Jovi. Um, why do we need to be fooling? Yes, yeah, my man CJ Grisham. So this is the first item on the agenda. James Everett is the the one that put it up there. And this is what we're doing, a minute of Killeen City Ordinance. So also Yes, sir. Says CJ Big Boots in the house. Yes. So we don't get the fun plan that we got town hall. Have a true town hall. One second. Sit next to me. No, no, no. Bow tie that like button for them. Check it out of the screen door. All we can do. They changed the format of what was supposed to be a town hall at the last minute. And I was expecting direct engagement. Joe Will Bank said, I love the bow tie. I bow tied that like button. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I guess I ain't the only one that went live, you know. And, you know, you're going to have to make that the norm, you know. That should be the norm. But yeah, make sure y'all tap into that link. Um, I'm going to stay live, but you don't have to. I don't know if you can follow both of us at both the links at the same time, but um, definitely you want to um, tap into that live stream link so you can comment and um, and redress your grievances through that link. So we're going to be doing that at um, it should the, the link will probably be opening up in about three to five minutes. Shit, I ain't up there because ain't no more room. Everybody got the front row sold up. But I think I might be the first one to go speak about it, though. So, so I, I got here about an hour ago and signed up. So I should be the, one of the first ones to speak. All right. If you are new here and you've never been here and you want to talk, I just want to remind everybody I got about six people that have filled out an application, but. If you do want to talk before we get started, I'll call you up here, but make sure that you fill one of these out through the city secretary right there. So I just want to make sure that everybody that wants to talk is not surprised. If I don't call you, it's because I didn't get one of these. Said, 
bot said John James. Said something about John James. Spam me. <laughs> That's the bot. That's barely enough for shit. a good question john I, I will be addressing that to it yesterday but i will be addressing the fact that you have to sign up and like you should be able to go up there and speak anonymously you know but i think it was more important that i actually spoke today but you know versus trying to fight that just trying to get my get my speech and everything ready but um, the front yard at Yeah, they didn't like ask for ID or nothing. They just wanted your name and um, and they asked if you're a clean resident. Yeah, this is point one five. That's right. So yeah, that's 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 what I was talking about, John. I didn't see no. That what law says that you got to register. That probably isn't law, it's probably just a policy. But we will be addressing that soon. Power of One said they want to know where you live and your name. Thumbs up. So at this time, I am going to go ahead and call the City Council for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to a new and exciting new year. <laughs> and so let, it, let the record show that the entire council is here and they are present. So welcome council. We're going to get started with our citizens petition item number one, which is CP22001, Mr. James Ever. I hope I pronounced that right. Everard? Everard. All right, Mr. Everard. Commencing your order, section 16. Dash 107. Welcome, sir. You got three minutes. Um, as a lot of people know, the laws are constantly changing and evolving, and uh, they do that most of the time for them. And I understand that the majority of the city ordinances were created well before any of you were elected by the Supreme Court, and if you were even in the majority of the uh, ordinances we have in place right now are 20, 30 years old. And in the state of Texas, a lot of times the laws change and adapt to meet with the current times. Well, sometimes we come across these laws and they can become problematic because the laws have changed. Uh, underneath the city ordinance 16-107 has interference uh, or obstructing peace officers, which is just one sentence. <coughs> and as many of you may know, we have what's called supremacy laws here in the United States. Or if you have a city ordinance or a county ordinance, uh, it is superseded by the state ordinance, which is actually covered in, in the Texas Penal Code itself in 108. No government subdivision or agency may enact or enforce any law makes any conduct covered in this code uh, or offense subject to criminal penalty and any other law. Basically, saying if there is already a law existing in the Texas Penal Code, you cannot have any city ordinance activity against the county. Now, as you can tell, this is the city ordinance. One little sentence here. This is the state, and continues on to the second page. The big difference in this change in the majority of laws in the United States, especially in Texas, is what we have is, uh, it is defense of prosecution. And defense of prosecution is basically a fancy way of saying, if you did this, it's not illegal. Like we have here in Texas that says if you use speech only or if you did a certain thing or whatever it may be, like when it comes to carrying a hand, because it says if you're a law enforcement officer or if you carry legally or if you have a license to carry or that nature, that you're not actually breaking the law when it comes to carrying a firearm. And we have to have these so that way people know, hey, I'm not breaking the law. And peace officers know that they're not actually going to arrest people for something that if they're not committing a crime for. So, and as much as it's difficult to go through and find every single little change that's done to the city, uh, city ordinance, you know, guys like me that can bring it to your attention and say, hey, it's uh, something that needs to be updated, and hopefully uh, the city 
can get together, see the, uh, the upgrades needed, bring it to a vote, and get it brought up to the state level so there's not going to be any people in the city arrested for what may be legal on the state level that preempts the city. Questions? All right, great job. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. And we'll, and we'll refer that to our legal and sometime in the future, I'm sure we'll come back. And so with that said, I know we got other people that want to speak and we're going to move on to our citizens petition. And this is the part where we allow members of the public to address the council regarding items other than the public hearing. And, uh, and, and it's not a regular city council meeting, so we don't have public hearings, but we'll allow everybody to speak here during the citizens comment. And the first one, I'm just going to call them in order that they were given to me is Mr. Kevin Butler. Thank you. All right, so I first want to start off with a with a question. I ask this question to every cop that I come across while cop watching. Are you familiar with the First Amendment? I've asked this question hundreds of times, and the only person that was able to answer was Officer Smith, badge number 425 of the Killeen Police Department, so kudos to him. The reason I ask is because there seem to be some sort of attack on our freedoms in this country. And so the reason I'm here speaking today is because a lot of people have forgotten about the First Amendment. Again, my name is Kevin Butler. I'm an advocate for accountability, activist, U.S. Navy veteran, military spouse, and father. My wife is currently serving down the street at Fort Hood, one of the largest installations of freedoms freedom in this country, which makes it somewhat ironic that mere blocks from Fort Hood entrance, I was accosted by Colleen police and plucked off a public sidewalk, thrown in jail cell, thrown in a jail cell for exercising one of the most basic freedoms we have in this country, freedom of speech and freedom of press. Why do you think those ideas were implemented and protected by, our, by the founding fathers? Because without free speech and free press, our voices would become silent forever. I did nothing wrong, nothing illegal. This has affected my family mentally, financially, and emotionally. I now have to take time away from family to clean up the mistakes of people sworn to uphold and protect our constitutional rights. I want to emphasize the fact that this ordinance had to have gone through the hands of majority of the positions that sit up here To overlook and omit the basic constitutionality of this ordinance is egregious and a direct violation of the Texas Penal Code 39.02, which is abuse of official capacity. It reads, a public servant commits an offense if with intent to, to harm or defraud another, he she knowingly violate the law relating to the public servant's office or employment. Everyone from Officers Patterson, Officer Crum, Sergeant Bias, Chief Kimball, and everyone who sits before me are responsible for my unlawful arrest. You cannot criminalize a constitutionally protected activity such as free speech. I would like to encourage you to take a good look at this ordinance as it does not reflect the state law, Texas Penal Code 38.15, and it absolutely does not reflect the Constitution. Thanks for your time. Okay, we appreciate that. Next is Mr. Michael Fonino. Welcome, sir. You got three minutes. Good morning, all. Jay Hart, Kevin here. Hey, I remember too we discussed architectural site design standards. It's something we really need to be pulling around with. I mean, this is just another way to dovetail into something else we've been discussing here. Uh, Kevin Lewis. Which goes under the tent with uh, trying to get more buildings in this town. We've already overloaded. We would go to items, example 23, we're going to build more houses on lot sizes of 0.155 acres. I can comfortably put a shed on that amount of land. I mean, this is this has got to stop. Okay, this building fervor. Okay? Time and time and time again, they come up here. It's almost like I'm on a loop. Okay? We can't sustain. Why are we building? We can't sustain and maintain what we already have with regard to city services, law enforcement, code enforcement, etc. 
check every box down here, they're already overwhelmed and overloaded. And with regard to public hearings, item number 20, we'll public hearing the proposed charter amendments. After the flu flam that we got with regard to the town hall as sold, and what most of the members of the audience behind me were present that night, one of the impression what it was going to be was not. What I propose is a charter amendment to have a true town hall with question, answer, clarification, direct engagement with any and all of you at any given time quarterly. That way, there's no screen door, glass fence, whatever we want to call it, where we can have direct engagement. And again, sort of dovetailing with what the gentleman before me had to say about the First Amendment, redress of grievances. Okay? My phone's not ringing off the hook for any of you. I'm up here, I discuss and bring up valid, pertinent points that everybody can see, but my phone's not ringing off the hook. So I think that we as the citizens and as your constituents are entitled to have direct engagement for the First Amendment, redress of grievances with the government, and that's you. So all of this, I sum it up, we're already overwhelmed, knock it off with the building, put up a moratorium, whatever you have to do, okay, until we can have enough police officers, enough code enforcement officers, et cetera, et al, down, down the list, stop building. Okay, because sooner or later, I mean, after events with the mall recently, and the gentleman who spoke before me, things like that. We're not exactly attracting business. And sooner or later, this town, as the population grows, and we need to start looking, I don't want to live in Waco, but we need to start looking at what Waco has done to turn themselves around. Okay? They are maintaining. That is their principle out there. They're maintaining what they have for city services and what the people expect. Sooner or later, somebody who's sitting up here, probably in the next 10 years on population projection, the specter of eminent domain. Those three minutes have expired. One more minute on this, Jermaine. The specter of eminent domain is going to hit, and then when the bulldozer plays, hit somebody's district here, and say, how did this happen? Well, if you have an economically depressed area, and the need arises, eminent domain is just going to bulldoze not just neighborhoods, not just people, but it's going to bulldoze you folks up there. And what we're sitting in, when that happens, I've seen that happen as well. So, again, please apply better thinking with regard to the bigger picture. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mr. Donald Smith. Welcome, Mr. Smith. You got three minutes. Mr. Mayor, council members, my name is Don Smith, 30 years in the Army, 21 and a half working for a defense contractor, has taught me a little bit about management and leadership. Some of the lessons were learned the hard way, though, because I had a hard head. The city division chiefs cannot have two bosses, Mr. Cagle and the council. We've got a winner with this man. When you have a winner, stay with the winner. Don't mess with his organization, in my opinion. The council will tie up Mr. Cagle answering questions if you go straight to the division chiefs that may not be the city manager's position. What's that going to do? It's going to waste his time. It's going to cause frustration. Division chiefs that are doing a good job, are they going to be happy with two bosses? I don't think so. I sure wasn't when I had a similar uh, job. It, you know, they, it just won't work. If you have a weak division chief, what could he or she do? They can play you guys and gals against the city manager. That will waste a lot of time. In the Army, we have an old saying, don't fix something that is not broken. We, uh, you know, if the council has questions, go to the expert, Mr. Cagle. Let him work it out with the division chiefs. Don't go to one of them who have tunnel vision just on their issue. But go to Mr. Cagle. Let him do his job. Give him the resources. If you've got issues or problems, 
let him work it out with the staff rather than getting in the middle of it. Thank you and have a good uh, happy new year. Right, thank you. Next is Mr. Bill Parquet. Welcome. We've got three minutes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council members. Um, I was, I'm aware of Mr. Butler's situation only from what is in the paper, and I couldn't disagree more. Um, I watched a number of so-called First Amendment advocates, uh, auditors, excuse me, uh, on YouTube, and the scenario was always the same. You have someone who really pushes the situation and turns it from nothing into something major because the more drama there is, the more views. The more views, the more valuable this person's work becomes. It's one thing to keep the police in check, and I think through the actions now of body cams and dash cams and everyone uh, recording with their phones, the police realize they're always being scrutinized. Doesn't stop every. Uh, wrongful incident, but it has come a long way to make sure that everyone is treated a whole lot better, regardless of color. But to interject yourself into uh, any law enforcement officer doing his job, now he, as it said in the paper, now he's distracted. He's got the person he's dealing with, and he's got to worry about what you're doing. And you're That's trying his to responsibility. when he's trying to get some information he needs to go ahead and solve the problem. So no, I, I don't want to change anything. Um, I don't know why people do this. Well, I do. I answered the question. It's about money. The, the more views, the more money, the more valuable it is. But uh, no, I'm totally against uh, changing uh, any policy that allows these people because it starts with Mr. Butler. How many other people are going to go, oh, and I can do this? Every time I see a police officer stopping somebody, I'm going to get in that interaction there, and we don't need that. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is Mr. C.J. Grisham. <laughs> Welcome, sir. You have three minutes. Yes, sir. Thank get you, Mr. Uh, members of the council. I, I gave you a document that is what I was going to read from, um, and what that is is the, the code that Mr. Everard talked about is unconstitutionally vague as written. It needs to be changed. What I've provided you with is uh, some points of law, the Citizens Participation Act, uh, Carney v. State, which is an appellate court that, that uh, covers this area, as well as a Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals case that ruled directly on exactly what Mr. Butler was doing. It is on point that he had a right to film the police. He didn't get involved in anything. He was standing on a sidewalk and he was talking. And I can't believe we have a citizen up here. So, I mean, instead of reading this to you, I'd like to kind of just give you my, my thoughts and, and ask you to read, because th this is the legal reason why you should change your, your uh, ordinance. Um, but I can't believe I just heard somebody say that we can't have people exercising their rights. That's all that Mr. Butler was doing. He was exercising his right to hold government officials accountable. And when there's an ordinance that the police can uh, in, in some way look at to undermine that right, that's a complete violation of the Texas uh, Citizens Participation Act because it chills that speech. We have a right as a citizenry to hold our government accountable. Guess what? Law enforcement is government. Okay, and I think we've seen, especially over the last couple of years, that had it not been for people filming cops, we probably wouldn't have some of the convictions that we've had recently. We probably wouldn't have had some of the social justice that we've had recently. And yet there are actually people that want to chill the right of people to film cops doing their job to make sure that they do it right. Now that only, it not only protects the citizen that's being interacted with by the police, it's protecting the police. Because if the police, if, if there's a claim against mm -hmm. the police and there's film out there, guess what? If that film contradicts what that person is claiming against the police, you've just protected the police officer's job. Mm -hmm. But you can't create a crime out of a, an articulated right under our Constitution. Mm -hmm. The free speech, the right to press is enumerated in our Constitution. The Fifth Circuit has made this very clear 
that citizens of this circuit, which Texas falls under, have a right to fill in the in the description. Every, not every circuit, but every circuit that has ruled on this issue has found that there's a right to film the police, and not one circuit in this country has said there is no right to film the police. He was at a decent distance, he went exactly where he was supposed to go, because the officer told him to stand where he went to go stand, and then when he opened his mouth, oh gosh, we can't have that. The police officer went up and arrested him. For doing what? For telling the citizen what his right was. He wasn't telling him what to do and what not to do. He wasn't saying resist. He wasn't saying run away. He wasn't saying shoot somebody. He was telling him what his rights are. And if we have a, a an ordinance that law enforcement can use. Your first two minutes. May I have a minute, please? I'm almost extra minute. Yes. Uh, if we have an ordinance that police are relying on to say that you don't have a right to inform citizens of their rights, then that ordinance needs to be changed. And uh, once again, it, it, this is. This is a legal issue that has already been, Colleen PD and this city is already liable for what happened to Mr. Butler because the Supreme Court has already ruled on this. There's no qualified immunity in this case. If this doesn't get mm. dropped, if the city doesn't drop it or force the prosecutors to drop it, there is civil liability for the officer involved, the police department and the city for failing to train their officers on Turner v. Driver which is the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals case. And I just implore you all to use your power, whatever you have, mm -hmm. to make sure that Mr. Butler gets the justice he gets. He can go home and stop messing with these, these charges that should never have been brought before because the police officer didn't know how to do his job. And, and Officer Patterson needs to be retrained and probably suspended. Thank Time you. expired. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next is uh, Anka Negu. Welcome. Three minutes. That was good. That was good. Keep up, the link. Standards. I think the city should focus on health and safety aspects of regulation rather than architectural appeal of homes. Focusing on safety is hard and challenging enough. There's just no need to add more regulation on architectural appeal. Every new regulation you approve will add to the cost of a home, which means that less people will be able to afford the home. Having an architecturally appealing home is nice, but it doesn't help you less people can afford them. Focus on traffic impact analysis, which related, relates to safety rather than architectural design. The traffic Im impact analysis adds enough to the cost of a home, but at Thanks, least Kibo. it's something essential for citizens. Uh, for example, a garage door, uh, as far as architectural design is concerned, is proposed. The garage door cannot be more than 50% of the width of the house. This greatly limits the options for a home on a small lot, lot. It may even be impossible to build a home on a small lot. I think it's better to prioritize standards, uh, where to increase the standards. Making a, a house nicer from the outside is nice, but it's not a priority. Uh, it's better to uh, work on safety and functionality. Even safety is challenging enough. You can only spend so much money on making a home or a car or a road safer before it becomes unreasonable. I think that specific architectural standards should depend on the home buyer, the home builder, and the neighborhood itself. Uh, it should not apply to the whole city. If someone cannot afford a fancy looking garage door, that should not, uh, that shouldn't be, they shouldn't be left out of home ownership because of an arbitrary architectural uh, standard that increases the price of a home. If they can afford a nicer home, sure, they can pay for it. They choose to do it, but they shouldn't be mandatory. Before voting on these architectural standards, please think about who they affect the most. I think it's a bad idea, mainly because it pushes lower income individuals and families out of home ownership. And it's not fair to them. And it's not good for the city. Homeowners usually take better care of their homes than renters. So it's better for the city to encourage home ownership. I, um, my opinion is that you should disapprove the proposed architectural standards and focus your efforts on safety. Thank you. All right, thank you. Right. Our last one. Uh, F no F and V yet. I still haven't heard from the five yeah. mile veteran. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Council. Jared Mosher, 
Junior, 6503 West Fargo. Um, I want to talk about some architectural standards and what's in front of you. But before I do, I want to refer to something I just heard here. Uh, I support the police. Uh, I think we all need to support the police. Uh, they're, they're under fire. We all know that. Uh, we've all seen things on TV that were wrong. There, there's no denying that. But all in all, we all need to support the police department. And I've been on the wrong side of that several times. And I'm probably on the wrong side of that in the future. But needless to say, I do support the police. And I think that uh, there's no doubt we all need to support the police. And there's no doubt that they make mistakes, just like all of us make mistakes. Um, and some of them are with grave consequences. We've seen that on TV. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. But um, if it was wrong, there's been things wrong. But they do a good job. Um, uh, things happen. And so I'll leave it at that. But that's not what I'm here for tonight. But I just want to go on record to say I do support the police department. And I, I think that uh, we all should support them. And they're not perfect. And I think we all have to realize they're not perfect. Uh, just like I'm not perfect, just like y'all are perfect. And their mistakes happen. And but that doesn't mean that we throw them under the bus. So I won't say that. Uh, the architectural design. Uh, I think that uh, we need to have some hearings on this. So we used to have what they call uh, stakeholder, stakeholder meetings. Uh, I, I'm not too involved as I used to be, but there's some there's some things here that, that cause problems uh, in our industry. And, you know, I, I hear, I've heard this for year after year about how we got to quit building, we got to quit building. <coughs> I've never set up on the city council, but I would ask every one of y'all to go back and look, where, your, where does your revenue come from? Where does the revenue from the city come from? And I think you're gonna find the biggest revenue you've got is your water, selling your water. Makes millions of dollars for the city. That takes a house, or that takes a commercial building, that takes a customer. So I don't get the, the other side of the argument of how we're losing money and how we're getting killed and we can't afford it. I, I, Somebody's got to explain that to me better than three minutes up here. But if you look at your water sales and what revenues you make out of that, if you look at your solid waste, you look at your, your uh, water, sewer, and garbage, and then your ad valorem tax to, to the property value. City money. I mean, y'all aren't in business. You're a taxing entity. There's all three minutes are up. Extra I minute. Another minute. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to have three more minutes. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you can have his one. <laughs> so I'd like to say in a short time. Uh, you know, we're, when we look at the architectural details, uh, say the front door shall be uh, stained hardwood. Well, people don't like hardwood. And I'll tell you why, because the sun hits the wood out there. This, this hardwood door is very expensive. So what happens? It fades out, the lacquer, the paint, and then they got to redo it, and it cracks. A lot of people like metal doors. And they're more secure. They feel safer. I prefer a metal door myself. They're not near free, but I feel like I've got more protection. So these, these become individual people's ideals. An individual's ideal is just that. It's their ideal. It may not fit for the rest of us. We talk about variable roof pitches. You know, I've been I've been involved in building construction since I got kicked out of school. But variable pitches, I don't there's very few houses have very time pitches. has expired. Sorry, I, I finished. That's it. <laughs> That's it. We need to have we'll get you on a committee. <laughs> Nobody put me on one. <laughs> we need to have uh, stakeholders and go over some of this. Thank you. Board. Appreciate it. All right. So with that, we're going to skip ahead and move on to our discussion items for the regular city council meeting of next week. And first thing is our minutes, MN 22-001, consider minutes of regular city council meeting of December 7, 2021. And MN 22-002, consider minutes of regular city council meeting of December 14, 2021. Any questions or comments, council on those? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to our resolutions, RS 22-001. 
Consider get up out of here in a second. Authorizing a lease agreement for seven mowers to maintain Stone Creek Golf Club with Deer Credit Inc. through the Texas Bible Cooperative in the amount of $376,513.07. And, and Mr. Brown, welcome. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> yeah. That's some good stuff right there. I'm <laughs> like, just we're trying to keep it simple. You know, just telling the legal aspect. I think know more people are going to talk from the personal experience and mm -hmm. emotional things of that nature. So I guess go up and be like, hey, you're fucking up. Here's yeah, what you yeah. need to do. It makes it exactly, exactly. I wonder what happened to uh, Five Mile Veteran. I ain't heard from him. I hope you're all right. I haven't heard nothing from him. He's kind of spastic. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's, so, okay, I'll talk to you guys real quick. We're going to work on the paper in a second. Yeah, What's your name? Sure. Taylor. Oh, you're Taylor. Okay. Not nice. Sorry. A little short. Hi. Uh, 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 like oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you're here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, my name's Louis uh, Miner. We had, uh, I think someone from my uh, office yeah. reached out to you about the petition drive that we're looking to yeah, organize here. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, is that something you'd be interested in, in helping out with? The petition? Are you talking about for the... Um, Decriminalization of marijuana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, we're looking to kick it off this month. Okay. Uh, so we got a planning meeting tomorrow. And, okay, uh, okay. Tomorrow. Yeah, I should be able to come tomorrow. What time? 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, where is it at? If you give me your contact information, yeah, yeah. I, I can... Uh, yeah, just write it on here, and I'll text it to you um, okay. as soon as I get back to my office. Yeah, send me the info. I should be able to make it tomorrow. I'm probably all okay. I think uh, we're trying to get around 5,000 uh, signatures. Okay. Would that be registered voters here in the city of Colleen? Uh, okay. To get it on the petition. Uh, okay. So, okay. So that's the game. That's the goal. So. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, definitely. I'll be down for it. Right. Just hit me up. All right, hold on, y'all. We got to talk to my man's real quick. Is that man speaking on behalf of a lawyer? No. No, he's talking about like a petition they trying to start up by de decriminalizing marijuana. I'm like, I'm all for that. Brandon said, definitely decriminalize and, MMJ. Uh, yes, sir. Time, petition, hey, here's an ordinance. Here's what it should be by law or one. What's up with them, um, them, them ru Russian, Russian, so Russian get the bots, uh, Kibo. Here's uh, an idea of what a good. Christopher Adams said, how are you feeling after that? I feel good, man. I'm like. You know, I don't, I don't think I was nervous. I might have kind of rushed it a little bit, but I think I did okay. Um, hopefully we got their attention. I mean, you can see it was a lot of, lot of <laughs> couple of boot gaggers came up in there and tried to, tried to rebuttal, you know, and, but. I, I mean, the facts are the facts. You know what I'm saying. So, the big thing is, uh, the hopefully they'll they'll see see what's what what's going on and do the right thing and get that ordinance on up out of there and try to put pressure on them to uh, yet, I mean, to drop the charges. I really love um, you know CJ. I'm glad CJ came in there after after uh, after the boot gagger and kind of rebuttal what he was saying. I'm like, cool. I thought we was gonna have more people coming up and talking about it, but a lot of people didn't weren't able to make it. But but um but it is what it is. I hopefully y'all y'all made y'all presence felt on that on the live stream link. 
and um oh okay 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 so cj yeah okay so i was wondering because i thought it was another person that was in the law school so cj's the one in the law school okay yeah yeah no wonder why he's he went up in there was speaking speaking nothing but straight facts <laughs> okay okay i mean Absolutely, in, in the the auditing community, as I like. Yeah, y'all go follow uh, C.J. Grisham on YouTube. He and did a, he did an excellent job. job. That's the one with the cowboy hat down there. Auditor, yeah, that myself. went up there I'm speaking. I don't personally do that. He, he did it really well. Van Pierce, I said you're the new founding father. I say I'm the I'm the Pied Piper, baby. I'm the Pied Piper. What's going on, Christopher? Shout out from Las Vegas in the building. You see, I had him hit him. Mazenga, I had to hit him with that section 39.02. Abuse of official capacity. Yes, sir. Let him know that y'all, y'all, y'all are currently in committance of a crime. Until that, till that gets revoked. So that gets off the books. You guys are committing a crime. Always knows the law. He knows where public access is. He never swears. He never gets upset with. Always super polite. Don't answer that. Say <laughs> 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 hey, everybody raving about you on here. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> they raving about you. I'm like, man, who is that guy? Y'all put put him put his name. I want to know his name. And I'm like, that's my man, C.J. Grisham. <laughs> he did really. Everybody love you up in there. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to talk about the law, and I was going to give him an education on what the law says. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. And uh, after I heard that guy speak, I, I could. My, yeah. You know, my, my soul spoke to me at that point. Uh -huh. I was. I was happy happy that you you went up there after he did because yeah. that was that was perfect timing too <laughs> you know and here's the thing this is and i just said this in my stream if someone filming right so you say i you know i support the police i back the blue and all all that all that you were doing was baiting the police doesn't that really say that the police have brains of a fish exactly yeah i mean isn't that yeah, kind of yeah, insulting exactly yeah like that they can be baited by like if you know what i'm doing right why would you why would you fall for if that if that if i'm really out here baiting cops and, and trying right. to they call they say i'm a lawsuit lizard you know what i'm saying that's the case then okay. Why would you fall for it? Thank you. you never yes. Know. You know what I'm if, if you know that I'm out here trying to get a lawsuit, which is stupid, why would you're I want to? For accountability, I hate when people ascribe a you know an intent behind what someone else does because they don't like it. Exactly. So your cop screwed up. Oh, and it's Butler's fault. Right. Right. The hell? <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was good. I thought it was gonna be more people speaking. I know FM Five Mile Veteran. He wasn't able to make it for some reason, but man, I had a big, I had a big discussion with that officer in there before, I think before you got here. And oh yeah. Cause some guy, he was like, uh, yeah, this is where I signed up to speak. And he's like, yeah. And he says, uh, you just put the agenda item here in the topic. And he's like, well, I don't know if what I got to say is on the agenda. And he said, well, you can't speak if it, you got to speak on the agenda stuff. I said, sir, don't listen to him. That's not what the law says. Oh really? And so I'm sitting there telling him and then he's like, look, if you don't speak up there and the mayor tells me to tell you to leave, I, I've, I've got to make you leave. And I said, oh, so no, you're going to follow an unlawful I, 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 order? I just yeah, told, I even quoted him the paragraph the right. of you know, the law in, in 552 okay, that, okay. Well, that uh, says that, no, that, you can speak on any topic. And if you censor someone based on the content of their speech, it doesn't matter what that content is. That's a violation. Then that's a violation of their rights. So I, so I see that that's a rule, but there's a law that says this rule is unlawful. Hey, you guys want to talk mm. to the little reporter guy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and I can talk to you eye to eye. <laughs> I, I was like, looking up at like, yeah, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about that's that. That's why you always say to me if something happens, he just gets behind. Yeah, me. I just hide. <laughs> Unless someone pulls so, a taser out, then he jumps yeah, in front of me. Yeah. So the main question I really want to ask both of you, and something that you guys kind of both addressed in tonight's thing, and you know. It's safe to say that, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people have divided views on you. Some people Absolutely. may disagree with you. Some people yeah, yeah. may say that. Uh, like what Pocket was saying tonight was that he disagrees with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, as a conversation me and James were just having, a lot of people in the auditing community tend to not really do it for the right reasons. They tend to do it for that thing. And to maybe address those concerns of people, what would you say on that? Just watch the videos. You yeah. you see you'll see all of my intent in every last one of my videos. 
Um, only time you might see me even open my mouth is when I see somebody's rights being violated. Yeah. Just like on the night in question that I got accosted. Um, mm -hmm. Only reason I opened my mouth was because I saw him in the back seat trying to get somebody's information, and I know for a fact that if you're a passenger, you don't have to. You don't have to identify yourself. Yeah. I mean, unless it's in certain circumstances that don't allow it, but, and I didn't know the full circumstances of the situation, but that doesn't negate the fact that I can verbalize uh, the rights of the of the people, yeah. you know, from a public sidewalk at a, at a safe distance. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I would say was just, just watch my videos and you'll see every, all the attending and, and my motives will, will, will show in the videos. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll say that, I don't agree with 100% of the auditors either. Yeah. But you know what? It's a bill of rights, not a bill of what I think is right. And when you get up there and say somebody shouldn't do something because I don't like it yeah. or because it goes against someone that I do like, well, what's the point of the Constitution? If it was only to protect speech we agreed with, we wouldn't right. have it. We right. would just ban everything we don't agree with. Well said. The whole point of the Constitution is to protect people like Mr. Butler here yeah. to be able to do the things that hold government accountable. You know, yeah. our ability to seek redress is fundamental to this country. We were born on that principle. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to agree. I, I bet you Mr. Butler does agree with everything I do on gun rights. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and I haven't seen all of your videos. I mean, mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything I disagree with, but I've seen some auditors I disagree with, but I'm mm -hmm. not gonna go around saying they shouldn't be able to do that. Yep. And if we make it easier for someone to exercise their rights, then we're, I'm against that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. And that's why I got, you know, I, I ended up getting a little, a little bit more emotional because I was gonna give a very dry legal perspective to the ordinance. That's what I had written down. Mm -hmm. And when he got up there and said, you know, if, if we change this ordinance, well, it's not just gonna be him doing it. There's gonna be other people doing it. Okay, well, yeah. good. Good. Let's have more people exercising their rights. Mm -hmm. um, and so I it's obviously I need to, it. <laughs> yeah, I tell these people it's a bill of rights, not a bill of what I think is right. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to agree with everything everybody does. You just have to agree with their right to do it. Like no man over five fire should drive a Miata. That's what I think, but it doesn't mean it should be a law. <laughs> I disagree with that. I think, I think Miatas are right. Huh? No, no, anyone over five fire. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. You and so I are we're good. good. Well, I'm five, well, I'm five, six. Oh, then you shouldn't be driving. Yeah, well, well for you. there might be a buffer zone. <laughs> we can say five, five and a half. We yeah. can, we, we can, we can add that if you want. Or a Z3, okay? That's the top. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Not a big monster fan, to be honest. Okay, well, I think that about does for me. The main question, you know, is mainly just wanting to know, you know, because like I said, I mean, you know, a lot of people, they are going to be very divided on issues such as this. And mm -hmm. we, you know, we don't want to get every opinion out there, you know, because... As I've told James, you know, my main thing is the truth. You know, I don't want yeah. to, I don't want to make it bias. I don't want to say, well, I'm pro this, I'm pro that, anti that. Anti and they got my number well, and I, and I said this, I said this in there, so I don't mind saying it so again if you're right. reporting. But, you know, if if you do support the police, and that's the reason you oppose this, well, now what you're saying is, because that video that he had could have very well. What if those guys accused the officers, the people that were in that car, accused the officers of planting something, and yeah. he's got the video showing no, nothing was planted. Mm -hmm. Well, that protects the officers. Yeah, mm -hmm. they come out and they okay. drop a bag on the ground, like, you yeah. planted that. Mm -hmm. video so, that. So, you know, to sit there and say, I support the police, and I don't like what Mr. Hughes is doing. Well, Mr. Hughes is protecting the police, mm -hmm. but he's also protecting those occupants in that vehicle. So, I, could, I should just calling it kevin now that we're out of that, yeah the formal <laughs> say, a lot of people get the mistake that me and see that's a use yeah you said i'm very much pro police i'm just pro i got a friend named cop kevin hughes so I oh okay <laughs> for the good cops, i feel bad for the good cops because the small amount of shit cops yeah are making the good because everyone thinks that when like for kpd what I know KPD has issues because they have a higher turnover rate because of low pay yeah. and clean kind of stuff ass, you know, so they're constantly going through officers, trying to keep up, understaffed, under budget, it's difficult. And there are some really good officers at KPD, I've been working with them for a you know, Cole's a good time. officer. I, yeah. I had a good debate with him. Yeah, good guy. Cole. I quite a few times. Yeah, I ran it. I ran I got a video of it Cole on there, too. Yeah? Yeah. And um, <laughs> you just got to watch it. Okay. Stupid. <laughs> It's not that bad though. He's, he was cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I mean that, that, that's 
I mean, that's what we want to understand, too, because I know a lot of people will come out and say, well, they're arguing with the cops, they're they're filming the police, they must be anti-police, but, like, the three of you have said, they're not anti-police, they're anti that you know, yeah. they want there to be more accountability. I can tell you how many times I've been called a bootlicker. And, and, and here's the other thing. <laughs> if it's true that these guys are just looking for money, why are the cops giving them a reason to have people come watch their videos? Yeah, exactly. Why not just make them all boring? Oh, gosh, here's another boring video of exactly. a police officer. Asking for a driver's license and going yeah. about his merry way. Mm -hmm. And you know, all departments in Texas, including Colleen, have had training on what to do with First Amendment auditors because they've been around for years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so they know, don't, don't engage unless you need to, unless they do something illegal. Don't, basically ignore them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, don't that... flash them with flashlights. Don't right. come up and be rude to them. Basically, just treat them like they're not there unless they do something dumb or get mm -hmm. close and be play with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know it's like, hey, do me a favor, you know, you have your right to do it, you have your right to record, if you give me a favor and stay 20 feet away, if you, by doing that, you know, then you're with, you're outside of the danger zone, you can just continue to do your, right. what you're doing, and, yeah. uh, we, you know, we support your, your right to do so. But see, that's how you know the ones that, that need to be recorded are the ones that, that don't do what you just said. Yep. You know, if you doing anything outside of just letting me record and document, you shining your light at me, you trying to push me a block away from the scene, or you trying to, you know, trump up charges or trying to arrest me like I got arrested the other other night. There, there are some dumb otters too. Like I never saw one guy walked up with some cops with a uh, Draco and a ski mask on. It's mm. like, yeah, that's probably not a good idea because if I was a cop, <laughs> I would ding too. Yeah. Or those guys that went into that uh, police station in Michigan <laughs> with, with the masks and stuff. Yeah, okay, we're that's auditing you with AK-47. What? And, yeah. Yeah. Baklava. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I always screw up that name. Baklava. Is it Baklava? Yeah. Baklava is the candy. Baklava. Baklava. There we go. Baklava. Yeah, Baklava. Yeah, Baklava. Baklava. Yeah, Baklava. yeah, I got candy on my face. <laughs> I mean, that's that's Baklava. stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Baklava's a pastry. It's holoclava. I always screw that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Michigan pastries. <laughs> They're delicious, too. Well, yeah. Well, thank you gentlemen so much for your time. All right, just make sure Grisham is G-R-I-S-H-I-M. S-H-A-M. I'll yeah. give you a card. That way you spell. And it's C-J with a M. How about mm -hmm. C-J, uh, well, uh, are you, what's, what oh, media are you with? Clinton Daily Herald. Clinton. Clinton Daily Herald. Clean oh, Colleen Daily yeah. Hero, okay. Yeah, they're liberal, so they'll give you a good shake. Don't worry. Yeah, I did a few interviews with, I, yeah, and I did a few yeah. stories already. Good speech tonight, man. Well, I, I'm all for First Amendment. I mean, Bill of Rights, I think, if it helps. I'm obviously not from Texas, but. Where are you from? New Jersey. Welcome to Texas. Yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. I've been here 10 years. Oh, okay. Uh, well, okay. welcome 10 years yeah. late. <laughs> ten years in a house, so yeah. I mean, you know, okay, okay. Your property you got a decade here. You're a Texan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and, and <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually I'm always very careful about that. To say that, you know, people say, oh, well, you've been here X number of years, all that. I I understand that there is something special about born and raised with native Texans. I, I never want to. You know what the comeback is? The comeback is. Do you realize that the majority of the people who defended the Alamo were from Tennessee? Well, I mean, I, I say I mean, <laughs> my, my last duty station where I got to Fort Hood was Fort Polk. Okay. And that's not too far. JRTC. Jim Bowie got into fight with the sheriff over there. Yeah. So I figured, you know, I, I, you know, Jim Bowie wasn't from Texas, but you know, he yeah, came through. Most of the famous Texans weren't from Texas. No, no, I, I get that. But, I mean, when it comes to the First Amendment, um, where in principle I agree with you, mm -hmm. but where I disagree is. Uh, on the face of it, could the whole thing have gone down better? Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I, I think, like I said, we're well-intentioned, and like I said, it's First mm -hmm. Amendment, so I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not going to say that you're right or you're wrong. You have to say it. We say, you said, okay, as I understand it, there was the people who were stopped or the bombed or whatever, and, and mm -hmm. all that, and there was a weapon involved. I remember where exactly I saw that. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, well, yeah, they put was. out a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah they put out a KPD statement. KPD put out a statement later saying there was a gun involved. Right. Mm -hmm. But if that's the truth, then why did they turn their back? Why did he turn his back on his partner uh, to, to deal with them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like, even with good. that. What I'm, what I'm about to say, it kind of ties in. It's just it's yeah. not my first time in front of the council. Okay. Yeah, even with that, that should give him more, even more incentive to, to just focus on your job. It's your responsibility to focus on your no, job, I, I not not someone standing on the where, public sidewalk. Where the officer, where the officer could have, he 
could have handled it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective and what I saw, mm -hmm. here, there again, I only saw what led up to, and I didn't see after you were taking the customer, so I'm not claiming to have the whole story. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, the officer probably, you know, topics, mm -hmm. okay, uh, where you could have just said, okay, officer, after you conclude, I have some questions, you could have just been a silent witness, just from mm -hmm. somebody who's been on both sides of a rifle around both. Yeah, around yeah, yeah, people. I understand. You, for your part, probably could have said, I'm just going to stand over here and do, you know, you, officer, tell me where I, where you would have comfortably. That's have actually where he did. Mm -hmm. The officer told him to go stand where he was standing. Right, right. But I'm just saying, where you were interjecting and all that, and telling mm -hmm. him, you know, I don't know how bad the guy's shift was before you two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot. I don't know. Which is irrelevant. But, but I'm saying, he, for all I know, he could have cut five, six people before you a break. Mm -hmm. And then, having been in the field, Sooner or later, you're like, all right, that's it. You know, yeah. Draw the line. Now, let's and that's a, but that's a professionalism. I'm, I'm that's, that's, yeah, that's a I'm professionalism issue. There could, mm -hmm. have been, there could have been, the butter could have been smoothed out better. Yeah. Yeah, I, on your I agree. Side, you know, his side. Yeah, I could have, I could have, could have probably de-escalated it for him, but I don't have any training, so. Yeah, I'm still doing, you know, I'm still learning my and, way and as the, well. The thing about these guys is they. Get a chance to ever work with uh, David from Newtown, Houston. They, the Gold thing about those guys is they, they also protect. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know who that is. That's that's my man's right that's there. Most professional honor that, uh, yeah, that's now Houston. Yeah, yeah. I would love to work with Patrick. <laughs> My theory is he hangs out with um, Patrick. Uh -huh. Because Patrick's an idiot who does dumb stuff. Oh, yeah. So him hanging with him, he can get him to do dumb stuff for content. So David doesn't have to. Oh, okay. So that's the only reason I can think of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you now. I get him. I, had, I actually was on a, um, a call with... Uh, Five Mile Veteran News Now Ninja. Oh, wow. well, uh, well, I was with Five Mile Veteran, and the News Now Ninja uh, was on the call with Five you Mile Veteran. Press pass he has? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. He's like, yeah, there's a couple times the cops go, I asked him, you got, you got a press pass? You got a press pass? So I made him one, like, now, next time they ask, you pop it all. Like, Here you go, press. Fuck you. <laughs> right? That's what I need to get one of them. Um, them ID. Yeah. I'm gonna get like some, 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 you know, them children magnets that you put on the, the letters that you put on the refrigerator. I'm gonna get one of those and say ID, and I'm gonna put it on the card. And so when somebody, when next time a cop asks me for my ID, I can, I can. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Send me a picture and kind of what you want, and I'll print it out, and laminate it. And just gotta throw a lanyard or something on there. If you want a magnet, I do magnet too. Oh, okay, okay. My wife has a crafting business, so I have all. This oh stuff damn. Okay, okay. She makes like uh, leather earrings and vinyl stickers and candles. Oh, shit. Our best selling candle is called the Surprise. Surprise, yeah, okay. It smells like rancid diarrhea. <laughs> and then you put something really nice on top. <laughs> Apples or sandalwood. <laughs> give it to your wife. Oh, it's so nice. 20 minutes later. What the fuck? Dang. <laughs> like a prank candle? Yeah, a prank candle. Then we got a little bit of freedom that is, um, smells like, uh, um, there was a, an older gentleman behind gun powder whiskey and clp and it's got the uh, spent casings in it oh snap damn that sound dope as hell right there <laughs> yeah this is not a bad seller oh yeah i'm back oh yeah she got a um like a a, a site that she's selling from or facebook molly's creations molly's creations okay yeah y'all go y'all go check out molly's creations on facebook it's m-o-l-i-e m-o-l-i-e yeah Okay, okay. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, except when we do the bench one, we gotta do it outside because that shit. That's what I mean. I like that. The ass. I'm making a candle. Close the door. How the hell you get the diarrhea smell? <laughs> uh, you know, you ever see the gag stuff where they spray it and it smells like. Oh, milk? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the concentrated. Um, Whatever the, the chemical stuff like a, uh like the sulfur is yeah, probably we got something the ultra like that. Heavy duty yeah. strength yeah. stuff, and we just mix in with the the vegan soy wax. Oh wow! Yeah, mix it up to all the custom candles and a bunch of different design yeah, models and stuff. Oh snap! That's cold. Yep. I just work on guns. <laughs> Never know when I do funny stickers. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Yeah, so Seriously. someone wants a sticker like "fuck Joe Biden" or they want something personal for the back of the car. I'll make that for them. But yeah, here you go. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to go out and shoot some time. Well, I got enough guns to supply a platoon, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whenever you go, just I just don't got a new to... too. What? Yeah, I got that uh, hybrid forty-six for my. Uh, you know what an AR-10 is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The AR-10 chamber in three fifty-eight Winchester. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a pistol. So I got so short enough to put the suppressor on. It's only got an eighteen-inch barrel with the suppressor. Oh damn. It's got a little thump to it. Whoo! I bet. <laughs> Well, AR teams. Yeah, I got a bunch of ARs, AKs, and uh, AR-180, uh, a bunch of Soviet Eastern Bloc guns, mm -hmm. a shit ton of pistols. Oh, okay, I, I, okay. I got like 10 safes. Damn. And Whew. two ammo lockers. Yeah, you ain't playing around. No, so. I'm, I'm kind of that crazy <laughs> white dude. Where it's like a zombie apocalypse happened, everyone would be knocking on my door. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, that's what I'm, first place. I'm going with something, something, yeah, get the so going down like jimbo let me let me let me get a couple of a like couple of here's now. a pack of 22 so fuck off <laughs> <laughs> yeah I so don't, you can I don't, handle I don't, them out i don't count my 22s by round i count it by pounds now damn shit. so you can be handing out handing out handguns for halloween <laughs> for my buddies actually they came by i gave them little baggies of nine mil <laughs> now, here's 25 rounds of uh Hollow points, that's why you go away. Nice. <laughs> All right, it's like, oh, if you're a wife, you can have, you can have full metal. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Nice. The UPS guy hates me. I know he do. He, 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 he like going 250 pounds of ammunition. Like, oh, Molly, help me bring this in. <laughs> he going to get that good workers' compensation off of you after it's all said and done, though. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this address alone contributed to my, my bad back. <laughs> I got 5,000 rounds of 308 I'm coming right now. Oh, wow. Sheesh. Yeah, I like my 308. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 308 I is actually nice. want to build an AR, another AR-10 pistol, but with, like, a 10-inch barrel on it and 308. Mm -hmm. Just have a little, little shorty AR-10. Ah, ah. Damn, damn. <laughs> it's not going to have very good ballistics, but it's going to have a fireball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. What part of town you on? Uh, I live in uh, the rich people part. You know where the, uh, the Parker Heights YMCA is? No, not really. Okay, uh, you know where Rosewood is? Yeah, I know where that is. Rosewood, you take a left on uh, Stagecoach, right around the corner there of all the estate houses. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I, a lived, nice area. I live down on uh, Skyline, like right off of uh, Houston. Oh, okay. Yeah, then I lived on Medina in the Arab neighborhood for a few years. Oh, wow. It's actually a really nice neighborhood, but a lot of renters started coming in, and then we had some drug dealers, kind yeah, of yeah. shit. So I said, screw it, and just bought a quarter million dollar house. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I'm 100% disabled, so I don't pay any taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, so like, man, you loving, loving that. Well, I know you love loving that. quarter acre, four-car garage, in-ground mm -hmm. pool. 24 square feet, it's not bad. Oh, okay, um, okay, while okay. we're out here now, I'll do it. I just finished yeah, it. Yeah. I'm looking to pick up uh, 20 oh, acres of land ball. later this year, so. 20 acres, woo! Yeah, yeah, gotta have my... Oh, yeah, I got to have, yeah, you're gonna have to get building. your shooting range going now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna build um my bunker. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, basically, I'm gonna tell okay. the builders, I want it 50 kill. <laughs> Maybe if you go with a machine gun, I'll make it through, but uh, semi-automatic, eh. Right, right. <laughs> uh, no. My wife's upset because I didn't call her. Normally when I go to do these things, mm -hmm. because I've been arrested three times. Oh, wow, for, really? I'm listening. For nothing. Well, for uh, recording? Oh, yeah, it's exercising my rights in one way or another. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and so she's like, anytime I come to do something like this, or a rally, or a protest, or an event, or speaking, um, she's like, you need to call me when you're done, so I know you haven't been arrested. And because she stresses out. So you think your mom's going to get you in trouble, huh? She stresses out about that. Because I, I mean, hell, my last time, I almost got killed by the cop. I mean, he tasered me, uh, cracked my head open on the concrete. What? Hey, oh, yeah, I'm suing him right now. Yeah, unless you're for annexed, you're for what? What happened? We're standing there. Because, so, Jim Jim was holding a gun, legally, mm -hmm. standing on a street corner. And all of a sudden, these cops just show up, start pointing guns at Jim. 
I had just talked to the police chief the day before. Yeah. Literally 24 hours prior to that. Y'all ain't put like no cameras? Oh, we had cameras everywhere. Oh, okay. We had cameras everywhere. Okay, we had okay. First Amendment, we had like five First Amendment auditors. I had a camera. He had a camera. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. We, we, we had the whole thing covered. Okay, good. Because we were going there to protest a very abusive police department. Mm. And sure enough, within four minutes of Jim standing out there doing nothing, uh, but, you know, he's playing on his phone and smoking a cigarette. Cigarette. Suddenly, oh, cops saying, come. You, well, I came on the scene not, just as they were showing up. I got there. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Hey, you might want to put your guns down." Damn. You know, you're about to get an education here. And right, right. So then they tell me. So I go up and stand next to Jim because I'm the one that set this whole thing up. I'm like, I'm like, damned if you're gonna point a gun at my battle buddy. And this is Texas. This is uh, almost Park outside of San Antonio. Well, it's, oh wow. It's it's kind of in San Antonio. And. Uh, so they're like, move away. I'm like, no. They're like, get on the ground. No, I'm not getting on the ground. Right. I haven't done anything. Ain't no dog. And, and we're asking them, what crime have we committed? What crime have we committed? And they wouldn't say, get on the ground. Oh, that's one of those get on the ground. Like, no, what crime have we committed? You tell us what crime we've committed, and we'll obey your orders. Otherwise, we have every right to be here. So eventually the chief shows up because i keep asking every time another cop shows up i'm like are you the chief because i talked to him on the phone but i don't know what he looks like are you the chief no i'm not the chief get on the ground no i'm not going to get on the ground next word are you the chief finally the chief shows up i'm like chief i'm like are you the chief and he's like get on the ground like i'm not getting on the ground he's like well move away there's a man with a gun right there i'm like i've got a gun you know i i was everybody strapped i was open carrying my gun and uh, so then he instructs one of the officers to the, with an AR-15 uh, that was not on safe but on fire to arrest me. Well, he didn't say arrest me, but he starts coming towards me. No one ever says you're under arrest or anything like that. He just starts coming towards me. I'm like, whoa, uh-uh. You know, I got my hands up in the air. I'm backing away from him. He's trying to grab me, and I'm making sure he can't touch me. And the chief comes up behind me and tases me in the back as I'm walking backwards. What? Hands up and everything. And I cracked my head. I barely missed the curb thing by like a few inches. Ooh. But still, my head cracked open on the concrete. I don't remember any of this. Thankfully, there's video. Yeah. They, my legs didn't move. They had to, they literally dragged me uh, from where I was into the police car and like shoved me in the police car and said I refused to walk. I couldn't use my legs. And oh, wow. so anyway, it was that. So we're suing them now. Then they charged me with uh, resisting. So Jim and I were getting, we're getting magistrated. <laughs> we're getting magistrate in Bear County and the judge is ruling, you know, okay, on obstruction of a sidewalk, you know, $2,000 for. Uh, this uh, two thousand dollars. Oh, and 